Good afternoon, guys. Okay, we'll continue the HRS class. So here, uh, what we learn in the HRS class? <clears throat> From the material classification, right? Connectors, semiconductors, insulators. <clears throat> okay, a Ohm's law, current density, what exactly mean by electric current? Okay, uh, properties of connectors in the electric field. Okay, uh, energy gap, I mean, energy band diagrams of the materials, right? So, the electric current I equal to minus dq by dt, where minus sign indicates okay, uh, the electron flow, which is opposite to current flow, right? Similarly, three types of currents. What are they? Conjunction current or direct current, displacement current, and diffusion current. Next to current density. Current density is represented with J, J equal to D, I by D, S. Okay. Um, the conclusion is I equal to service integral of J dot D, S amperes. Okay. In terms of, okay, uh, regarding to electric and magnetic fields. Okay. And uh, what is meant by Ohm's law and uh, connectivity. Okay. Uh, this is the fundamental relation of the Ohm's law. Okay. V equal to I R. From the above relations, voltage and currents are represented as E into D and J into S. Okay. Here, the notations E into D is represented as E into L. J into J is represented as J into S. S is the surface area. So, notation here taken as S. Here, D is taken as L. Okay. Just to substitute those, J equal to sigma E. And this is the R equal to L by S or rho L by A. This is the fundamental expression. We got it. Okay. Okay, so far you know only R equal to L by A, but how do you get that relation? Okay, this is the source of uh, Ohm's law. Okay, and uh, what are the uh, what are the typical values of uh, okay uh, conductivity of different materials, aluminium, silver, water, semiconductors. Okay, and relationship between J and rho V. Okay, uh, this is very very important. Relationship between conduction current density and uh, volume charge density. Uh, sorry, uh, of course, volume charge density. Um, so here, J equal to rho V into VD. This is the point form. Uh, sorry, uh, this is the continuity equation. Okay, this is called the equation of continuity. Okay, how do we derive? Already, you know, from the last class. Just point form of Gauss law. Uh, sorry, point form of Ohm's law. J equal to sigma E. This is the basic uh, fundamental Ohm's law. Okay, originated from uh, okay, electromagnetic field theory. Okay, point form of Ohm's law, relationship between J and E. We concluded with J equal to sigma E or okay, the, the, this is already, you know, okay, from the semiconductor physics. Okay, but uh, how do we get these relations? Okay, from these concepts only. Okay, already this problem is covered. See here, a wire of diameter one millimeter length. Okay, a wire of diameter one millimeter length one millimeter, uh, the uh, wire of diameter, one millimeter length, uh, length and length, I mean, the length of the wire is two meters and sigma and connectivity is 5.8 into 10 power seven, sevens per meter. Okay, what is meant by this uh, 5.8 into 10 power seven? Is it conductor or semiconductor or insulator? Connectivity value is how much here? 5.8 into 10 power seven, it's very huge. Okay, that's why connectivity is very high. That's why this is the metal. Sigma equal to 5.8 7 per meters uh, is the uh, specification of conductor. Okay, has 10 power 30 free electrons. How many free electrons are available? 10 power 30. Okay, uh, uh, 10 with 30 joules. Okay, and that many number of electrons are available for cubic meter. Okay, when E equal to E means 
applied electric field is 20 millivolt per meter is applied okay then find current density okay then find current density j and here current density j have to find drift velocity vd is how to find uh, c uh, current in wire and how much current is passing through and for resistance of that wire okay these uh, these four parameters these four parameters have to be calculated okay as per the problem statement uh, uh, first uh, note down the data okay uh, so uh, electron concentration is how much 10 power 30 that is always represented with small n okay uh, n equal to 10 power 30 per meter cube e equal to 20 into 10 power minus 3 Okay, just a second. Okay, I will uh, show you on whiteboard. See here, as per the problem statement, as per the problem statement, the electron concentration is how much? Electron concentration, okay, small n equal to 10 power 30, right? After what is this is 10 power 30, and electric field is how much? Okay, 20 into, into uh, 10 power minus 3. Okay, 10 power minus three next sigma is how much sigma value is 5.8 5.8 into 10 power 7 Right, uh, and remember what is the charge of the electron? Negative charge, 1.602 into 10 power minus 19, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, according to that problem statement, see here. According to the problem statement, first current density J. Current density J equal to sigma E, right? Current density J equal to sigma E. Okay. Uh, sigma value is how much? Sigma is 5.8 into 10 power minus 7. Okay, this is the 5.8 into 10 power minus 7 into E is 20, right? Okay, 20. Okay, when we well, well, multiply, we get the current density directly. Okay, finish. Okay, this is over. Next, drift velocity. Um, as per uh, the above derivation, okay, what is the relation between J and rho V? Okay, J and rho V are related as J equal to rho V into VD drift velocity from this drift velocity VD equal to J by rho V. Okay, from this relation we get current, current density J 116 10 power 4 divided by uh, rho V or simply electron charge 1.6 into 10 power. <coughs> See here. Electron charge density rho v equal to n into e, right? Electron charge density rho v equal to actually that rho v is 
the number of electrons available per cube, right? Cubic cubic meter, okay, meter cube. So this is minus one point six naught two. One point six naught two into ten power minus nineteen is the electron charge. How many electrons are there? Ten power thirty electrons are there. So this is the ten power thirty. So ten power thirty into the charge of the electron gives us uh, electron charge density. The electron charge density is here. 1.6 into 10 power 11. 1.6 into 10 power 11. That's why we get drift velocity. And third one is current in the wire. Okay, how do you get the current in the wire? How do you get current in the wire? Okay, current in the wire I equal to J into S. This is also from above relation. Okay. So uh, J is already, you know, okay, uh, and surface area. Phi R square. Okay. That is phi R square. Phi R square as uh, this is uh, okay, uh, here wire, wire having a, a diameter of length one millimeter and length of two meters. Okay. Wire of diameter one millimeter and length as two meters. Right. Okay. From this. Here are the further surface area, they consider as the surface area R equal to royal by A relation or okay, directly you may take this, uh, 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 take, take this relation. Okay. okay, surface area, J is minus, uh, uh, One uh, that is minus one point six into okay. Um, for that, uh, see here I equal to J into S yes, that J value. Okay, here they, direct, they indirectly mentioned, but according to that wire current in the wire, I equal to J into S yes, equal to. J is the current density already be found. Okay, this is not right. Okay, here current density J equal to one one six into ten power four. Right, one one six into ten power four into yes is the surface area as okay uh, some phi r square. Okay, uh, that is a constant as a uh, phi r square is uh, represented here as a one millimeter. Right, okay one millimeter means ten power minus three whole square. So that is 5 by 4 to 10 power minus 3 whole square as 0 0.91 amperes and this much of current going through the wire. Resistance R equal to uh, simply uh, okay, uh, L by sigma into S yes from the table relation. Okay. Or simply uh, R equal to uh, Ohm's law. Okay. R equal to V by I. Okay. From that, we simplified uh, form of this. So that is length is two meters, right? R equal to L by sigma S, yes. two by sigma is a 5.8 in 10 power minus seven, S is a 5 by 4 in 10 power minus six from the correlation. That's why from that uh, R equal to 0 0.044 ohms and this much of resistance it for voltage across the wire, V equal to IR from that ohms are 0 0.044 into 0 0.91, okay, 0 0.91. We get 0 0.04 volts and this much of potential Okay, exist on the uh, wire. Okay, uh, the problems related to uh, okay uh, this unit uh, may like this. See here, the next concept is the dielectric material. See here dielectric materials. Okay, what is what uh, what is meant by dielectric material? Dielectric material. Okay, and it's just like an insulator, right? The, the material which is which exhibits uh, non-conducting property. Dielectric material is a non-conducting material in in which 
no free electrons uh, uh, or mobile charges are existed for example plastic glass rubber okay all are dielectric materials the charges inside that dielectric are held by bonding force and are not free to move okay what what exactly it means by okay the outermost orbit electron and valence electrons are tightly bonded to central nucleus attraction force right the central nucleus and the any material is made up of number of atoms each atom contains uh, okay i'll show you okay any material uh, each material is made up of number of atoms each atom contains some central nucleus let us assume this is the central nucleus central nucleus uh, okay this central nucleus again contains some protons and protons and neutrons the protons having the positive charge neutrons have the heavy charge and uh, electrons revolve around uh, okay different orbits right electrons are revolve around, okay uh, rotate or revolve around different orbits okay here the outermost orbit electrons are tightly bonded to its central nucleus okay so uh, okay all these are tightly bonded to the central nucleus okay if these are very tightly bonded okay they are unable to move uh, okay uh, and uh, this is the conduction band okay this area is the conduction band okay here such type of electrons are not available okay outside no electrons are available because of this there is no current conduction takes place okay in the dielectric materials such type of electrons okay and in here uh, such type of electrons are not available okay here such type of electrons are not available because of this uh, they are unable to conduct uh, actually participate in current conduction okay so that is the reason in such materials a large fiber energy gap is exists between the valence band and conduction band the conductivity of these materials is zero the, okay all these points are you know right okay and the resistance is infinite okay under the influence of the electric field the bonded charges uh, <clears throat> yeah. okay the conductivity of these material is zero uh, under the influence of the electric field the bonded charges in dielectric materials shift their relative positions infinitesimally against the bonding forces Okay, the positive and negative charges shift in opposite directions, resulting in pairs of positive and negative bonded charges that are act like an electric dipole. Get it? Okay, did you get it? How that positive and negative charges shift in their position and uh, in different directions, resulting in pair of positive and negative bonded charges acts like an electric dipoles. Okay, this is the reason why. Um, Okay, how the dipoles are formed? Okay, under the influence of the electric field, the bonded charges in dielectric materials shift their relative positions and infinitesimally against the bonding forces. Okay, the positive and negative charges shift in opposite directions, right? The positive and negative charges shift in opposite directions, resulting in pair of positive and negative bonded charges that acts like the electric dipoles. Okay, uh, that is the nature of the dielectric materials. So next, polarization. What is meant by polarization? Polarization. Polarization. In general, what is meant by polarization? Pol polarization is nothing but orientation of the electric vector. Okay, or uh, the orientation of the direction. Okay. See here, consider a dielectric material with no free electrons. Obviously, the dielectric material doesn't have any electron, uh, free electron. Okay, consider here dielectric material with, and for an uh, for an ideal case, 
consider the electric material with no free electrons. If there is no electric field, the molecules or atoms within that material are in neutral position since the electrons and protons are bounded, right? Because of the no external forces. The atoms are said to be electrically neutral at that time, okay? With positive and negative charges equal in magnitude. The negative charges form a cloud of electrons, right? The negative, yeah, basically the electron having a negative charge, but the cluster of that uh, uh, electrons Okay, just like form a cloud of negative charge. Okay, no dipole exists in this situation and the atoms are in an unpolarized state. Why? Because there is no attraction or repulsion forces additionally atomic, right? Okay, because of that, uh, initially there is no orientation on that uh, 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 electrons or positive or negative charges. That's why that they are initially in the unpolarized state. When electric field E is applied, Okay, that is when external force is imposed on the dielectric material, the atoms are polarized. Okay, and the orientation of that uh, uh, okay, charges becomes uh, polarized. Okay, they are having certain, uh, they are having certain direction. Okay, uh, that uh, that that atoms or uh, that molecules having certain direction. That positive charge under the influence of force F equal to Q E shift in one direction, right? Okay. Uh, while the negative charges under the force of F equal to minus QE in opposite direction. Okay. The separation of the positive charge and the negative charge constitute an electric dipole. Okay. And for each and opposite equivalent magnitude of same charges. Okay. The separation of the positive charge and the negative charge kind of shoots an electric dipole in the in and in that way that the dipoles are formed. Okay, the dipole is oriented along the direction of the upper electric field. Okay, okay, the created dipole, which is uh, elevated along the direction of the applied electric field, such atoms called polarized atoms, and this process is called electric polarization. Okay, actually, the polarization concept is uh, uh, belongs to antennas also, okay, where that uh, the electromagnetic wave how uh, it is liberated from the surface, okay, based on that uh, the polarization is defined again, okay. But here that polarization is defined in view of how that electric dipoles are formed in the dielectric material, okay, when uh, external electric field is applied, okay. Such type of uh, uh, atoms are called polarized atoms, and this process is called electric polarization. With respect to the polarization, <clears throat> dielectric materials are two types as a polar type and non-polar type. Okay. With respect to the polarization, with respect to the polarization, okay, dielectric materials are classified as two types. As polar type and non-polar type. In polar type dielectric materials, the molecules are atoms process permanent dipoles which are randomly oriented. Okay, see here, figure A. Okay, here polarization is zero, right? Polarization equal to zero. Okay, and that is no orientation in any dipole. Okay, and each pair of charges acts as a dipole with the same dipole moment. Okay, since the dipoles are randomly oriented, the net dipole moment is zero. Okay, then the net distance traveled by the uh, traveled by the electron, right? Uh, that 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 case, such type of case. Under the influence of the electric field, the dipoles experiences a torque and gets oriented along uh, one direction. Okay, uh, that is the figure B is called a polarization of a polar dielectric materials. This, this is the figure figure B. Positive and negative, positive and negative, and this is the positive and negative. Okay, and which is having some orientation. Okay, initially there is no orientation. Okay, they are randomly polarized. Okay, this is this is called a polarization or polar dielectric materials. Okay, water and sulfur dioxide are examples of the polar dielectric materials. Water and sulfur dioxide. These two are the examples of polar dielectric materials. In non-polar dielectric materials, the positive and negative charges are coincident and there is no separation between them. 
okay the net dipole moment is zero okay the net dipole moment is zero okay the atoms in a non polar dielectric materials do not form dipoles until the application of the electric field they go okay under the influence of the electric field the charges are separated and they form dipoles with some dipole moment okay this process is called polarization of a non polar materials okay hydrogen and oxygen are examples of non polar type dielectric materials okay hydrogen and oxygen are the examples of non polar type dielectric material see here this is very important okay uh, this is the figure polarization of dielectric materials polar with no electric field is randomly uh, oriented a uh, polar with uh, application of the electric field okay oriented in one direction um, polar with uh, electric field non polar with electric field okay non polar with electric field is example for hydrogen and oxygen um, polar type is example uh, water and sulfur dioxide remember that examples okay the next concept is the dipole moment already you know what is meant by dipole moment already uh, in other classes we have learned dipole moment means dipole moment is simply the product of charge q and distance between them right charge q is the okay uh, uh, displaced uh, n, n charges of okay uh, with separated with a distance of d right okay but for suppose this is the plus q okay this is the plus q and this is the minus q okay these two are displaced at distances of small d then what is meant by dipole moment dipole moment p equal to q into d right okay that is and uh, this is the vector right so dipole moment of a dielectric material is simply uh, the distance between the positive charge and negative charge is d the dipole moment is the product of charge q and the distance d okay p equal to q d okay if there are a n number of dipoles any polarized dielectric the total dipole moment p equal to summation of n equal to 1 to n q i into d i already you know this relation right uh, similarly from the dipole moment here polarization is defined as the polarized dielectric material polarization is simply defined as dipole moment per unit volume okay dipole moment per unit volume and when we consider unit volume Okay, how many dipole uh, moments are there? Okay, for that uh, uh, cubic meter, that is called a polarized dielectric material uh, having uh, some polarization. Okay, so P equal to limit. Okay, delta V tends to zero. Summation of I equal to zero to n. Q I D I by delta V. Okay, simply Q I D I by delta V. Then it is said to be polarization. Okay, and uh, Uh, remember, okay, dipole moment is represented with small p, whereas polarization is represented with capital P. That is the difference. Okay, dipole moment is represented with the small p, and uh, polarization is represented with capital P. Next, what are the important properties of the dielectric materials? What are the important properties of dielectric material? See here. Uh, basically, uh, these properties of dielectric materials are, are uh, basically three properties are there: linear, homogeneous, and isotropic. See here, what is meant by linear? The dielectric material is said to be linear if the flux density within that material D varies linearly with E. Okay, what is the relation between D and E? Basically. D equal to epsilon e, right? Already you know, okay. Uh, D equal to epsilon e, okay. That is the fundamental relation. Okay, D equal to epsilon e. Okay, the the electric material is said to be linear if the flux density. This is the electric flux density within the material D. Okay, varies linearly with the e. the material properties like permittivity should be independent of the applied field otherwise it is non linear okay see here the material properties like permittivity should be independent this is the permittivity right epsilon 
homogeneous. A dielectric material is said to be homogeneous if its material properties, uh, comma permittivity epsilon and conductivity sigma does not vary from point to point in the material. Okay, that is epsilon and sigma should be constant throughout the material. Okay, what is homogeneous? Material properties. Material properties. What are the material properties? Epsilon, mu, sigma. Okay, the, these parameters are called material characteristics or material properties. These material properties are constant throughout the material. I mean, irrespective of location, okay, irrespective of time. Okay, these properties are constant, then that material is said to be a homogeneous. Okay, for an inhomogeneous or non-homogeneous material, that epsilon and sigma depends on the space coordinates. Okay, remember that. Okay. That is homogeneous. Isotropic, what do you mean by isotropic? A dielectric material is said to be isotropic if D and E are uh, in the same direction. If D and E in the same direction, and uh, another isotropic definition is already, uh, we discussed in earlier class. What is meant by isotropic? The material characteristics in all directions is constant, or magnetic property in all directions is constant. Okay then it is said to be isotropic right and the equally distributed in all direction is generally uh, uh, mean by isotropic okay the material characteristics in all all aspects okay. here the dielectric material is said to be uh, isotropic if d and g are in the same direction that is the material properties are independent of direction otherwise the material is anisotropic or non isotropic okay if D and G are in the same direction, then it is said to be isotropic. If uh, uh, D and G are in the not in the same direction, then it is called a non-isotropic. Dielectric constant. Dielectric constant. What do you mean by dielectric constant? See here, for a linear isotropic dielectric medium, the polarization vector is proportional to the upper dielectric field E. Okay, dielectric constant means for a linear and isotropic dielectric medium. Already, what is meant by linearity? Linear. See here, properties of the dielectric and the isotropic dielectric medium. The polarization vector is proportional to polarization vector is the capital P, right? Okay, this is the polarization, capital P. Okay, polarization vector, capital P, is proportional to upper dielectric field E, and P proportional to E, P equal to uh, chai E. This is called uh, the symbol of chai. Okay, chai E, epsilon. Okay, uh, this is called a CHI. Okay, not chi, that is called chai. Okay, uh, P, uh, dipole moment. Uh, sorry, uh, there is a polarization, capital P here. Okay, P proportional to capital E, upper delta field. That is P equal to chai E epsilon, where chai E epsilon not epsilon not are the proportionality constants. Where chai E is called the electric susceptibility of the delta material. It is a dimensionless quantity. Okay, as mentioned before, when electric field is applied, the electric material gets polarized. Okay, due to the polarization, the electric flux density increases. Therefore, the electric flux density of a electric medium can be expressed as here D equal to epsilon naught E plus P. Okay, this is also uh, important. Okay, electric flux density D equal to epsilon naught E. That is already you know, right? D equal to epsilon E.
okay so d equal to epsilon g equal to uh, d equal to epsilon not g plus p with a uh, some okay uh, polarization so uh, d equal to epsilon not g plus that p is replaced with psi e epsilon not e okay here uh, when we take epsilon not and e is common one plus uh, psi e okay into epsilon not e so but we know that d equal to epsilon not epsilon or e right actually d equal to epsilon e where epsilon equal to epsilon not and epsilon r okay here that's why from that epsilon r equal to one plus psi e okay can i replace one plus psi e with epsilon r uh, while comparing comparing these two expressions so epsilon r equal to 1 plus psi e equal to epsilon by epsilon naught. Okay, there is epsilon naught is the relative permittivity of a dielectric constant. Okay, it is the dielectric constant epsilon r is defined as the ratio of permittivity of the dielectric material to the free space. Okay, epsilon naught is the permittivity of the free space. Okay, that is the another one. Okay, the next concept is the dielectric strength. Okay. So here, when the applied electric field within the dielectric material is sufficiently large, and if it is enough, the electrons with a high acceleration will come out from that uh, molecules and collide with other atoms. Okay, and whenever, uh, when we supply the additional force, okay, which is more than the attraction force from the central nucleus on the valence electrons, okay, and we supply the additional force, Okay, definitely they are moved away or uh, simply they uh, away from that uh, valency band okay and uh, moved with high velocity because of the high potential okay that is the uh, and if we observe the difference between uh, gnr breakdown and avalanche breakdown what is the difference between avalanche breakdown and gnr breakdown gnr breakdown occurs at the lower voltages right relatively less than five volts and uh, uh, avalanche breakdown is uh, occurs at higher voltages okay because of the avalanche multiplication okay but uh, uh, jnr breakdown is due to the uh, direct rupturing of the covalent bonds okay similarly a uh, similar concept here when the applied electric field uh, is high applied electric field is high then okay the electrons on the outermost orbit is simply uh, relieved with high acceleration and come out from the molecules and collide with other atoms. As a result, the avalanche effect. See here. Okay, the same concept is coming to the picture again. The avalanche effect. What is meant by avalanche effect? Avalanche effect means okay, whenever the supply uh, okay, supply potential is higher than that attraction forces from the central nucleus on the valency band. Okay, simply they come out of from the valency band and move with high velocity. During that uh, moment, uh, they collide with the nearby atoms. Again, uh, whenever they collide with the nearby atoms, what happened? Okay, simply transfer their higher energy to that uh, that molecules. Again, the valency band uh, electrons, the valency band, uh, the electrons available in the valency band is again uh, okay move away from that uh, other molecule. Okay. In that way, and for suppose when when two electrons are available in the uh, conjunction band, okay, because of that higher potential, those electrons are moved with high velocity and collide with another another two molecules. Again, two two more electrons are relieved from that molecule. Okay, again now how many number of electrons are there? Two plus two four. Again, these four are collided with another four eight. These eight with another eight sixteen. Okay, in that way, the number of electrons uh, generated. Okay, uh, with because of their collisions. Okay, uh, for each time it is simply multiplied two, two into two, four, four into four. Sorry, uh, okay, and just like that, and four into four, uh, from four, four times as a, a 16. Okay, that is called an avalanche multiplication because of that problem. That is called avalanche effect here. Okay, as a result, avalanche effect may occur and very large number of free electrons are uh, generated. At this at this stage, the dielectric material starts conducting now. Okay, and even insulating materials are also conducting. When when if the more number of electrons are available, if the more number of electrons are available in the conduction band because of this avalanche effect. 
but it may require very higher potentials. Okay, that is that is the important point here. Okay, this is known as a dielectric breakdown. And whenever the number of electrons are more and more and more, get particular voltage. Okay, uh, that materials get breakdown. Okay, and just like our general breakdown here, dielectric breakdowns are occurred. Okay, the maximum electric field that the dielectric material can tolerate without breakdown is called dielectric strain. And until uh, uh, until which voltage uh, it is safely operated. Okay, if you carry, uh, if you are able to bear uh, 90 kg, uh, then okay. If, if I put 100 kg on you, if I put 100 kgs of weight on you, okay, um, if you are unable to carry, okay, and what is your maximum strength you are able to carry? Only 90 kg, right? And uh, when, when I put the 100 kg weight, okay, that leads to breakdown. Okay, and safely operating uh, oh, and safely carrying weight uh, is only 90 kg. Okay, that's why a similar concept. Okay, here, okay, and the maximum electric field that the electric material can tolerate without breakdown is called a dielectric strength of the material. Okay, so the applied electric field is more than the dielectric strength of the material, the material becomes conducting in short circuits between the sources, and simply it, it, get, it may get damaged. Okay, of course it is conducting, but it requires very higher potentials. As a result, it destroys the system. Okay, that is a problem. For example, lightning in air, K equal to 3 into 10 power 6 volt per meter. Lightning. Okay, and when thunderstorms are came, okay, the lightning effect is there, right? Okay, our electronic gadgets all are damaged. Okay, TV, fridge, okay, and nearby uh, almost nearby all. Uh, uh, the electronic appliances. Okay, the lightning in air K equal to 3 into 10 power 6, 3 mega volt per meter, 3 mega volts per meter. Okay, but all our electronic appliances are designed for 230 volts and 50 uh, frequency with a few, okay, of 0.5 amperes current range, right? In that case, instead of 230 volts, when we suddenly apply a spike of 3 into 10 power 6 volts electric field, okay. E K, how much? 3 into 10 power 6 volt per meter. And that much of electric field is additionally applied. Okay, is uh, is it uh, our electronic appliances, appliances are made, uh, made such, type, uh, such type of or uh, get such a huge potential? No. Okay, that's why it may get damaged. Okay, oil breakdown in transformers is 1.5 into 10 power 7 volt per meter. And the transformers break down. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, these are the some examples. Okay, all dielectric materials have a dielectric strength more than that of air. Okay, remember this point. All dielectric material, dielectric materials. Okay, all dielectric materials have dielectric strength more than that of air. See here, a slab of dielectric material of a slab of dielectric material of dielectric constant 4 okay slab of dielectric material of relative dielectric constant 4 is placed in uniform electric field of 240 volt per meter okay if the dielectric material is lossless okay find electric flux density capital d and polarization okay what is the electric flux density d d equal to epsilon e already you know so d equal to epsilon e what, what is meant by epsilon epsilon I called epsilon naught and epsilon or so epsilon naught value is already you know 8.8.8.8.4 8 and 10 power minus 12 and epsilon r is mentioned here for epsilon r is for relative permittivity to 4 into 8.8.4 8 into 10 power minus 12 into upper delta field is 240 when we multiply we get the okay, electric flux density is 8.5 into 10 power minus 9 okay coulombs per meter square Okay, and polarization, what, what is the polarization? Polarization, okay, generally, uh, electric flux density D equal to epsilon naught E plus P, right? Okay, from the correlation. Polarization, actually, the electric flux density D equal to, uh, okay, P plus epsilon naught E, right? Okay, from that, D equal to that relation is substituted here, like this. Okay, D equal to epsilon naught, epsilon naught E minus epsilon naught into E, okay? So when we take the common word as epsilon naught, epsilon naught minus one to E, epsilon naught is four, right? 
4 minus 1 is 3, 3 into 8.854 into 10 power minus 12 into 240. So 6.37 nanocoulombs per meter square. And then this much of polarization uh, okay, uh, is like this. Okay, for the uh, dielectric, uh, okay, for a dielectric material. Okay, uh, this is the today's concept. Of course, it is a theory, but relatively uh, very good information. Okay, and uh, from this concept, we get only short answer questions. Okay, uh, not uh, eight marks or 14 marks questions that are not available in this topic. Okay, I hope you understand these concepts. Okay, I will continue in the next class. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.